Welcome back to Trader UK, the money management channel. Today, I bring you three stocks that I am buying right now. In fact, three stocks that I will continue to buy as we move into 2021 as well. The one thing they all have in common is the fact that they are all UK-based companies. Now, I'm a firm believer that all this uncertainty surrounding a potential no-deal Brexit situation is actually creating some good buying opportunities amongst the FTSE and some of the AIM-listed companies. So, if you are looking for UK based companies to invest in, these are the three companies that I would highly recommend looking into. Before we do get going today, as always, if I can ask you to like the video and of course subscribe for more similar content. Now, let's get going with today's video. So I'm going to start with one UK company that I already hold a large position in, but very happy to increase that position further. The company is Ocado PLC. This is their website here. They are an online grocery retailer based primarily out of the UK, but they generate significant revenues around the world now by selling their warehousing technology. So they've become a little bit of a tech company, which is quite rare for the UK, but they're really into their robotics and their automation, and they've got really, really good at that. They partner with foreign supermarket chains, and it sees them constructing and operating the warehouses that are used for collecting and packaging the groceries, but their technology is very, very advanced. They are 100%, this company is the world leader in its field and they have a good strong competitive advantage as well they actually acquired two robotics companies recently so clearly they're looking to maintain that advantage or increase it further the best thing about their partnerships with the foreign supermarkets is that the revenue that Ocado generate generates from those partnerships is tied to the success of the warehouses so the more products that their partners sell online the more money Ocado makes. So that natural shift towards online shopping in the grocery market, plus the influence of the pandemic and lockdowns around the world, that's really helping them out. Now, the share price here is currently £22.33. It's about 25% or just under that off its all-time highs that you can see on screen. You can see a bit of my position at the top there, although I actually hold this in multiple different accounts now. This is one of my largest positions. It's In here, it's sitting at a loss, which is why I'm happy to keep averaging in. Personally, I would like to be buying it at £20, £21 mark. When they did hit nearly £29 recently, there was a bit of a pullback. And I think that's because of all the media hype that was surrounding it. A lot of people saying that they had surpassed Tesco's as the UK's biggest food retailer in terms of market cap. And I think that's why we saw that pull pullback. It was a, a bit worrying or a bit shocking for investors to see that, knowing how big Tesco's are and knowing the scale of Ocado as well. So we've seen that pullback here and it's been stagnant for a, a few months now. But for me, based on the disruption that they're already causing to a huge industry, based on what lies ahead of them, their £17 billion market cap, that's actually about justified for me. Now, the company recently released results for the quarter to the 29th of November 2020. And you can see here, I've got it up for you on screen. Retail revenue was up 35%. Average orders per week was up 3%. Now, the thing with Ocado is they're at 100% capacity at the moment. Since the pandemic, it's really condensed a lot of growth into a small period of time. So they can't really take on many customers. That's why you can only see an extra 10,000 orders in the quarter. So that 35% growth is really impressive because that means it's come from people buying more. The average size of a shopping cart is getting bigger and bigger. Again, that's partly down to the way people were buying during the pandemic, um, stockpiling pasta and tuna, that kind of thing. But it's good to see that even without taking on loads more customers, they're able to get that growth still. Now, in 2021, they have three new warehouses going online in the UK. So that's going to increase their capacity by 40%. So we're going to see capacity increasing and we're also going to see basket size increasing as well. So the growth prospects for them are very, very strong. Now for me, every single KPI is good with this company. This is a buy, buy, buy situation. So Ocado, anything around the 20, 21 pound mark, get add into your portfolios.
Next up, we have another of my biggest holdings, except this time it's already one of my biggest winners as well. This is Jet2 that we have on screen here. So they are a regional package holiday provider out of the UK. They operate their own airline as well. They operate out of airports in the north of the UK, north of England, and they sell package holidays to destinations throughout Europe. So, of course, they've had a terrible time recently, just like everyone in the travel and tourism industry. And in fact, they still have next to zero operations at the moment. So cash flow, I'm sure, is a concern for them. But of course, with vaccinations now being distributed, we could see a return to action sooner rather than later for Jet2. Share price is currently £13.19, some way off their all-time highs as you would expect. Market cap about £1.5 so a small company. Let me tell you though, if you're not already holding this company, it is not too late to get in on this. I see a lot of YouTube investors talking about how they've already made over 100% on this stock. So I'm sure people out there think they've missed the boat on this one, but that is not the case. It's not too late to invest in Jet2. This company will be 2 or 3x in the next two years for me. It's not a case of if they reach new time all-time highs. It's a case of when they're going to reach those all-time highs. So still a good time to invest. There's a few reasons for this and I'm probably going to do a detailed video about Jet2 or about the travel industry in general because I know the companies very well and I know the industry very well as well but let's have a look at the reasons. The first reason Jet2 looks set to do big things over the next couple of years is, first of all, the pent-up demand for travel. There's going to be huge demand for travel in 2021 and 2022 after pretty much the entire world wasn't able to travel and in terms of holiday makers, people wanting to travel. Everyone in the UK likes to leave the country. The UK is a wet, dreary place at the best of times, so everyone likes to have their summer holidays, so that hasn't been able to take place in 2020. So 2021, 2022, there's going to be a lot of demand for their products. Secondly, we still haven't taken into account, we haven't seen the full effect of the loss or demise of Thomas Cook. So Thomas Cook was one of the biggest operators in the UK. They dwarf Jet2 in terms of size. Those customers who number in the millions, they are still up for grabs at the moment. And the numbers are so vast that they could literally double Jet2's revenue overnight if they just capture a small portion of it. The third reason reduced capacity in 2021 and 2022. Now that sounds like a negative, reduced capacity for the airlines. Now it does sound negative because if you're not taking as many people away, then how can you expect to make good money? Well, firstly, it's just a safety play that all the airlines and all the travel companies will be doing at the moment because they obviously can't afford to overstretch, uh, not even by an inch, they'll end up going bankrupt. But that's okay because if you know anything about travel, it's all based on supply and demand, like any industry, but more so, more so in the travel industry. There are going to be very limited seats available for the next couple of years to go on your package holidays, to go on any flights throughout Europe, despite the pent up demand. Whatever happens then, or sorry, what happens then, is that the price of the flights and all the package holidays and that kind of thing, they increase, well they skyrocket normally, as the demand is higher than what's actually available, you're gonna end up paying a lot for the holidays that are available and the flights that are available. If you go and check online, you'll probably see offers trying to entice you to travel at the moment, but if you look at offers for 2022 or end of 2021, I bet you the prices are very, very high because there's so much demand and not many products. And that's exactly what we're gonna see here. Then the final reason for Jet2, why they're gonna do so well, expansion. Despite the pandemic, Jet2 have just opened up a, another base in Bristol, which is in the south of the country. That makes them a national player now. They can access the entire UK market rather than just operating in the north, which is what they did previously. So it's clear that they see the opportunity in front of them and they're trying to capitalize on that. So again, this one, Jet2, not too late. This is a buy, 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 buy for me. And finally, a company that I have never actually held, I only started buying into this one recently, but a brand that I have always been aware of. Here on screen, this is ASOS, the online fashion retailer. It's another company who are significantly off their all-time highs, currently about 17% down from earlier in the year. Like I said, this is always a brand that I've been aware of, but 
I think current market conditions are going to play into their favour. The Acadia Group, who own Top Man and Top Shop, they went into administration recently, uh, which is actually set to cause some disruption for ASOS. They sell both of those brands, but their partnership isn't that well established. It was only 2019 that it was announced. It actually creates an opportunity for ASOS. They may be interested in acquiring those brands. Probably ASOS or Boohoo are the sort of leading contenders. Both of those companies, by the way, ASOS and Boohoo, I think they're good companies. I just lean a little bit towards ASOS at the moment with the news that surrounds Boohoo and some of the negative press that they've been getting. So ASOS could be interested in acquiring the top man and top shop brands, in which case they can add them to the brands that they already have on the website. Um, so that creates a bit of an opportunity for them. So as well as as well as a general shift towards online shopping as well, that's seen them deliver decent growth recently. One thing I did notice when I was researching this company is that this is no longer a little UK-based company. They generate more than half of their revenue internationally. The EU is a big market for them, so hopefully there won't be too much disruption with Brexit. That's probably my only or my biggest worry with this company, um, but I think the, the pros outweigh the cons on this one. And they're also seeing good growth in the US markets as well, which will obviously be a huge market for them to crack. So no longer a little UK company. This is the early stages of an international play in the online fashion space. Stock price, £43.99 pence at the moment. I was actually buying into ASOS today. I don't really have a price point for ASOS. I'm happy to open a position where we stand today and then just average in whichever way the price goes. If a no-deal Brexit does move the price down, then great. But I think that ASOS is going to prosper either way here. So those are my three companies that I'm really buying into at the moment. Ocado, Jet2 and ASOS. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. In particular, if you hold any of these companies in your portfolios, thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.